Dan Gross, and welcome to this brand new episode of the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight Series. This season we'll be filming in Bob Shop Re Records, this beautiful local space, and for those who don't know, Bob Shop Records is located in Brighton, New York, and is your home for classic rock, jazz, blues, and Americana for the past 35 years. Joining me today is Fox 45, a heavy rock and roll outfit right here from Rochester, New York. To my right, we're going to go down this way, is Amanda Rampey on bass and vocals, Vicky T on guitar and vocals, and Casey Lurch on drums. These gals are playing at the Bug Jar Sunday the 16th. We're still working out the time. There was a bit of a snafu with the, with the Facebook event. And they'll be joined by Nick Walter of Pink Elephant, Mueller, Clockman, and Forevers, clearly a very busy man, was kind enough to lend his services. We'll also be joining them on guitar. Fox 45, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, thanks for having us. So you started off in uh, April of 2013. So you guys have been around for a little bit. Though at the time, your lineup was a little bit different. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you had actually had a guy in your band <laughs> at, <laughs> at one point. So we talked a little bit about this before we started filming. But So obviously the goal wasn't to make a quote-unquote girl band. So what was the goal when you guys first got started? I mean, me and Vicky just kind of started jamming together. Like, we had the, you know, the thought was, like, you know, definitely jamming with another woman, woman was cool because uh, there's not that many um, in Rochester. There's more and more all the time. Um, but so it's, like, kind of, like, maybe it'll be an all-female band, but that wasn't necessarily the biggest goal. But we just kind of started jamming together, writing tunes, and uh, yeah. then... Oh, I think the goal is just to play music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what was the uh, was the heavy um, was that heavy sound in there to start or was that something you developed? Well, I think uh, Vicky and I, when we were jamming together, initially writing songs, it was kind of like a little more Riot Girl sounding, a little uh -huh. punkier. Um, and then Pauline came along at the time and kind of brought some heavy riffs in, and I think that kind of started us yeah. on that that path for yeah. this band. So uh, Casey, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. So when when you joined, it said like you know these two were jamming out. Pauline came in. So when you came in, what was the sound like? And you as a drummer, what what did you hear and say? Oh, I can put my own personality in this too. It was ironic because the the way I was introduced to these girls, um, I was at an open mic and a gentleman came up to me. I don't know if you ever heard of a man called Mike Brown. Hmm. He came up to me and he was like, hey, those girls over there looking for a drummer. I think you'd love it. Like, he knew that whenever I played at the open mics, I had like a a rockish type of feel, but I always played, you know, blues and funk and stuff like that. But when I was 13, like, I wanted to play the hard rock music, you know. Yeah. He came up to me. I went up to them. I introduced, it was uh, Amanda and Pauline I introduced myself to. And I had the first interview with them and it was just, it was unspoken just <laughs> chemistry you know what I mean yeah. like they were playing music that I wanted to learn when I was 13 years old so when yeah. I heard it I was like I know exactly what I need to do and I didn't even I didn't I didn't know where it came from it just it just happened like yeah. it just felt very natural to me so he was right I did love it <laughs> I do love it Okay, very, very, very natural, just sort of all melded together. So you mentioned when you were younger, you wanted to uh, play heavy rock, and that's what you were listening to. So we'll kind of go down the line here. What were some of your early influences that made you like, yes, I want to do this? Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah. Those punk bands. Those. Like I said, my friend Becky and I. She she played bass. I played drums. We were going to start a band, and when we did that, we were listening to. Riot Girl stuff, Green Day, Blink-182, all that stuff back in, like, early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. I was probably the only one out of the whole band to listen to that stuff, but whatever. Whatever. Well, I mean, we were all, you know, that age at that time. I know, so you guys had around. more experience on just the a different style than... I think oh, I went more <laughs> <laughs> I think I had more of the... Like, well, Vicky liked more, of, like, I don't know, like, just real like punk compared punk. to... <laughs> Real punk? Are we taking shots at anybody here? What? Well, I'm I mean, taking shots at Blink-182 like, a little bit. I mean, that's like the punk, nitty you know, gritty punk. No, yeah, like, like Vicky's into like, like bad brains and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I never. Um, Misfits, of course. Like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Very> mainstream. <laughs> I definitely, uh, yeah, Riot, a lot of Riot Girl stuff, like Bikini Kill, um, definitely got me, like, wanting to play music and be, like, out there and, like, loud and angry about it. <laughs> yeah. um, but as far as a bass player, definitely Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, stuff like that. I was going to ask about that because uh, they just released a, uh, a new album this past May, Ashes of Man. And checking through some of that, there, there are some heavy riffs in there. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, uh, confession, I'm a, you know, for those who've been watching, I'm a, a jazz guy, I'm a blues guy, I'm a classic rock guy. But I heard that, I'm like, yeah, this feels good. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you guys were working on that, you know, cause, so this is, this is your third release. I, I believe, or second, because you had a single. We had, right, because well, you had a single. Yeah, we had like an EP, work. and then, yeah, we had a single off of that. I guess if you count that as early, so right. third one. So you, how has your sound kind of evolved from when you first started out to, to what it is now, and if maybe you could kind of compare and contrast and give, give the audience some kind of sense, who haven't heard you before, maybe some artists who you might sound like, mm. if you can. Um... I mean, as far as how we've evolved over the releases, I think the biggest, most important piece of like those, a big part of it had to do with the studio mm -hmm. um, and our full length album. We recorded at More Sound Studios with Andrew over there, who's a great engineer and um, was really willing to listen to what we were after and get that particular sound. Um, as opposed to like with the EP, we kind of did it fast and we just kind of got the sound that every other band at that studio got and it was like, it was fine, but it wasn't like us mm -hmm. and with the, the full length, we were able to take the time and like really dial in everything and have Andrew do like so many revisions of the mix to get exactly what we wanted for every single little thing. So that was definitely a big part of the sound of those things. <laughs> far as bands that we sound like um i mean there's like what we think we sound like and then there's what people say <laughs> we sound like and like I sometimes people a, say dumb say stuff that. good that's um, a good answer we sound like dubstep and nature like, <laughs> um, i don't know i can't compare us <laughs> well, to a band if uncle we're, acid and the deadbeats um, like, people compare us to uncle acid and the deadbeats on and off which is like that's pretty cool i don't yeah. know if i can take you know if i can say like yeah we sound like that because they're so cool <laughs> Um, there's definitely Sabbath influences in there. There's definitely, like, bluesy influences in there, too. Um, some, some jazz, I think. Yeah, like people say that... You think, so? yeah. you think jazz? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you were to translate our stuff to, like, well, piano... Well, and some of, like, the bass fills and stuff, some of those little, like, doodle doodle is, yeah. like, a little... Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, doodle, yeah, no, it's doodles. definitely heavy. <laughs> People have uh, compared us to L7 a little bit before, yeah. which I think, like, depending on the riff and the moment, yeah. like, maybe. Um, it sounds like you guys have done a good job taking ownership of your sound. I think mm -hmm. that was probably a good thing that you probably couldn't pin down one artist <laughs> and say, oh, we sound like that. Um, what was the process of trying to take ownership of your sound? Because we, we talked a little bit about this before we started filming, trying to get away from the label of an all-girl band or you play girl rock. So is a part of developing your sound getting away from people trying to call you that, or did you have a goal not to sound like that? Um, I don't think our goal with our sound had anything to do with that. I think um, it's just funny when people throw that in there as like a genre classification when other people talk about us and you see it like, somebody posting on Facebook like oh hey check out this band they're a girl band <laughs> and then you get people coming to our shows that after we finish playing they're like I didn't expect you guys to be that heavy and we're like what did you think we were gonna sound like like, so good. like yeah. we're not the go-go's like right. like and I love them but like that's not what we're doing like what did you think we were gonna sound like and I think that I don't know I don't know I think it's kind of funny know. sometimes when people will pinpoint out and like oh girls all ladies and then they come to our show and they're just like Whoa, and they run out of the room scared. Like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> These aren't women. <laughs> Scary. I do love the feeling of being able to give people that shock value of just like, yeah. whoa. You know? yeah. yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. When you look at us, you wouldn't think, well, when people look at, I don't mean just myself, but I can't tell you how many times people have been like, just like she said, oh my God, where did that come from? We didn't even know. Yeah. 
It's so so it's good to be a little. <laughs> it is dumb, it's but at so the same dumb. time, it's cool to surprise people. Yeah, like that's that, true. You, know? like so you like you like the surprise factors that you just came off of a, a tour. Um, is that? I don't want to say that. I don't want to use it as an advertising gimmick, but is that something you kind of you tell people at the onset, or like do do you use that at all, or is just that just sort of a byproduct of what you do? I think we use it for the experience. No, I don't. Really. I'm not sure I understand the question. Right. So, uh, so you mentioned you don't sound like a girl band. You're not trying to portray yourselves as a girl band. So if you're trying to get a gig or you're trying to promote an album or if you're going on tour, will you say to people, "Oh, we're a bunch of gals who don't sound no, like that"? No, we just send them our songs. Yeah, we just send them a couple songs that we themselves. have on the album, and if they like it, they'll tell us that they want us to play. If not, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we definitely don't like use it as like a marketing tool because mm-hmm. um, I think like definitely you could. And there's some positives that come out of that, like the novelty factor and stuff like that. But I don't want to be... Us getting I don't up think, there and playing to begin with, I think, is yeah. like the marketing. But then again, it's, like, right. that's no, exactly. it's not like a big secret either. Yeah, yeah we just we like, want to let our songs speak for themselves, I think, for the most part, is the answer to that. Yeah. So I, I got uh, one more thing for you guys. Uh, you mentioned uh, Pauline kind of more at the beginning here. She is not with you guys anymore, I can tell. It's, it's very sad. Uh, and she, she was one of the original members, correct? Yeah. So. Maybe, you know, for those who maybe have seen you guys or are new to you guys, can you tell us a little bit about her as a player and bandmate and how you look to look forward to moving on and doing something different? Oh, it's a uh, I know it's heavy tough. question. Um, yeah, I mean, Pauline was definitely a big part of us, like, finding our sound, like, in the beginning with some of those riffs. Um, and definitely, like, was a, one of the major songwriters. Like, we've kind of shared songwriting duties a little bit, but a lot of the... Yeah, she did, wrote a lot of lyrics and was a, a, definitely wrote a lot of our songs. Um, and, you know, within the past, like, year or so, we've definitely been transitioning that a little bit, where Vicky and I have been doing a little more songwriting, especially Vicky, like, really stepping up with some of the new stuff, coming in with really cool uh, riffs. And, um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've got new tunes that we've been working on, the three of us. Um, and it's just going to be different. It's going to be different. Like, we're still going to bring the heavy, and it's still going to be fun. But, yeah. um... Yeah, it's just going to be a little bit different dynamic, you know, with mm-hmm. the the mix of personalities and the mix of influences being a little bit different. Saturday when we had our last show with her, I gave her a hug after we played and everything, and I was like, you know, I'm just waiting for you to change your mind. <laughs> the second you change your mind, we're going to just show you everything that yeah. we were doing, and you can just, you know, but she just kind of looked at me like... <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, that's just what I'm going to tell myself, just because it makes me feel better, and, you know, I... We all respect the decision that she yeah. made, and just like she wants us to be happy, we want her to be happy too. So, well, you said you're gonna keep bringing the fun, so we yeah. appreciate oh, that. Yeah. And speaking of fun, Absolutely. you guys were a lot of fun to have on <laughs> Fox 45. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Just as a reminder, you can check them out Sunday, the 16th, at the Bug Jar, and they will be joined with uh, Nick Walter, who plays. I have I have the list here again: Pink Elephant, Mueller, Clockmen, and the Forevers. And they'll also be joined uh, by. <laughs> Long live the goat. They're from Chicago and Cage Kings who are from Rochester as well. I'm Dan Gross and thank you so much for watching the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight. We'll see you soon.